Hello everyone and welcome to the final presentation um, from my artist uh, from Art on the Edge and Over. Um, and we will be doing chapter 4 with On Kawara. So, Kawara is a conceptional artist, which means the idea that he presents in his art is more important than the finished product. Um, and so a lot of his art is also minimal, as well as this um, conceptional part. Um, a little bit about him is he was born in Kawara, Aichi, Japan. Um, in 1932, and then he died in 2014 in New York. So he was about 81 years old when he passed away. Um, and you'll see that you will never find like a real picture of Kawara um, because he didn't like to, he never wanted to like show himself to other people and he didn't want to like pictures at all and so like the book really showed that and talked about that a little bit about like not having his face in anything and no pictures so this was a rare picture that I found of him on yours truly wikipedia so one of the ways that Kawara liked to perceive his art was through you know, the no feelings and just wanted simple things. Um, you know, conceptualism is, you know, the the journey to the art. Um, and so in the Today series, which is a really famous series that Kawara um, produced um, and is seen throughout um, all of all over the internet and wherever um, the Today series is what he is most famous for um, and kind of how he sets that up is really unique. Um, so pretty much um, this series focuses on the time as well as the location. So he, um, as you can see with these blocks, um, he uses the time in date of what what happened within those days um and then this picture here shows kind of like he uses clips from newspapers to be added into this um date to just kind of show like what happened on that day and you know why it was so unique um and then how he created this was that he used a specific font that didn't, it should say on there, did not convey personal habit or a quirk of any sort. So it wasn't, you know, like, um, discriminating against anything. And it was just like a basic font, minimal font that he chose to, um, show this date um show is not the word that I was looking for but here we are and so um he really wanted to give no meaning to anything and you'll see that in this YouTube video um hopefully it'll load I I recorded this earlier and it was not loading so hopefully it will load this time because I've been sitting on it so we'll just watch this video it, it describes kind of what was happening within these paint date paintings or the time series um not the time series but the yeah today series all right so we'll watch this One of the things that distinguishes Kawara from his friends and acquaintances who we associate with conceptualism is that he was deeply devoted to painting uh, as a practice. And this is very unusual during the 60s when painting was undergoing a kind of crisis. What he did was take the, the practice of painting to a new place. And he produced uh, an idea of 
about painting that he would subscribe to for the rest of his life, beginning in 1966. That painting would consist for him solely of the recording of a given date on which the painting was made. With Orn, he has a self-determined kind of beginning and an end within 24 hours or within a month or within a year. We refer to the day paintings collectively as the Today series. The Today series um, extends from January 4th, 1966, till his death uh, this past summer in 2014. The day paintings are produced according to a very strict uh, set of rules, um, a kind of protocol. Each painting, which is produced in the course of a single day, and if it's not finished, it is destroyed, it takes the form of a list of eight possible dimensions and three possible colors, gray, red, and blue. But the colors are hand-mixed, so red is never the same exact red from one red painting to the next. The same is true for gray and blue. So his paintings take the form of monochromes in the sense that they have a single field of color on which are inscribed in white paint the letters and numbers that represent the date of that day. And the language that he used for the date would change from place to place based on what city or town he was in um, at the time because Kawara traveled extensively. I like to think of the letters and numbers as forms in that sense, as shapes that Kawara expands and contracts in order to get them to, to arrange themselves in a particular way that will fit the composition as he kind of conceived it according to this set of rules. I think it's a very smart way to do something which is completely self-contained and it's non-aggressive, it's very contemplative, but it's at the same time also craftsmanship. When Kawara produced the day painting, it was when he was able to uh, focus and reflect on the act of painting uh, over the space of uh, the number of hours. Um, a day painting takes, depending on the size, four, five, six, seven hours to produce. The paintings are made in a very traditional manner of Japanese lacquer technique. They are 14, 15, 16, 17 surfaces. So this is interesting as a kind of activity which creates its own contextual existence. For me, it's a huge difference. Which day paintings? They are not alike at all. Some of them are very emotional, very beautiful. A day is very different for each person. After a certain date, uh, Kawara began producing uh, boxes for his day paintings and lining those boxes with newspaper clippings, which were derived from the daily press. So this is very Japanese. You know, you have a scroll painting, and you unroll it, and you roll it back, and you store it. The boxes originate with Kawara's need for storage. He was living in a constrained loft studio, and he was producing an enormous amount of work in the mid-60s. Each painting has its own box, and of course they contain the newspaper cutting. So each cutting from the newspaper represents a different news story of a given day, uh, and when you line them all up, it creates a, a, some kind of a, um, almost the impression of a narrative. So that's a little bit on the Today series, which Kawara really did. Um, actually, I think it, it really explains what happened, like the process of it all, um, and what Kawara went through in order to get each piece um, perfect. Um, the other thing that, the other series that he did was the self-observation. And he, of course, did other series, um, but this one was a really cool one that he used like postcards and he sent them out to different people. And you'll see that in the YouTube video as well as it will explain a little bit more about it. Um, the book did not really go into detail about this type of series. Um, so this video will explain more on it as well. Self-observation section of the show consists of three groups of work, the postcards, um, the maps, and the lists. Kawara produced them all more or less simultaneously over the course of 12 full years. 
partners. Um, so they go together in that sense. But they also go together in another way. They all represent ways in which he was observing himself, or recording his movements um, through a given place or from place to place. The postcards are called I Got Up, the lists are called I Met, the maps are called I Went. In the series I Went, Ankara would trace his path every day on a photocopied map of the city. The maps were cropped to depict the area where he was staying. So in New York, because he lived in lower Manhattan, the maps would often be of views of the city below 47th Street. Cora would look for maps that had the same general proportions or color balance so that there was some continuity throughout the series of the visual appearance of the works. He would draw his path, no matter what form of transportation he took, with a red ballpoint pen. He would mark the location where he awoke that day, which is also where he was when he sent his I Got Up postcards with a red dot. The series I Got Up consists of thousands of postcards that Kawara sent to different recipients, two postcards per day, um, every day for 12 years between um, 1968 and 1979. That totals over 8,000 postcards. Those postcards will describe the minute and hour of the day at which he got out of bed, I got up at. It's almost a way of announcing that you've begun your day. The postcards, you just receive them. I guess after you receive three or four, you would keep them because they're very attractive. Very, they have a sense of humor to tell a story. The I Got Up series began when Choir traveled to Mexico in 1968. Knowing that his friend, Casper Koenig, loved to receive postcards, he sent him postcards every day from first Mexico City and then throughout Central and South America, knowing that some would get lost in the mail or that something might happen to part of the series, and Cora began sending it to a second recipient. One of the things that the postcards that the I Got Up series represents uh, or tells us is that Cora was very interested in changing the model of the studio. The studio is wherever the artist happened to be at a given time in a given place. Cora began the I Met series when he was in Mexico City in 1968, staying at an international hotel full of students, artists, other travelers. He discovered that he was meeting people of a variety of different names from a variety of different countries and languages. So he felt that the names were, in a way, a ready-made poem and an international language that would transcend all boundaries. The I Met series consists of a, a, se a sequence of lists of people that Kawara encountered or met over the course of a single day. Each day has its own sheet. Each day is represented by its own list of names. On some days, he met nobody except uh, uh, his wife, for example, with whom he traveled. Um, so she, her name may be the only name on a given list. This is when he did this. I got up, I met, all these things suddenly ended. And it's rather anecdotal how they ended. And when he was in Stockholm, when he did official business, he would dress up and he had a business case and he would exchange American Express in a bank or so. And a guy stole his business case in a bank in Stockholm and what he got was like his stamps, a children's stamp for I got up. So in a way, I think he was relieved. He didn't have to do that anymore. It sort of just ended. So that was another piece that he did. Um, as you saw, it was, you know, something that he, you know, had... You use that whole conceptual um, side of things into his work, and he didn't really care what happened to the pieces of postcards, just as long as you know they went out and um, did their thing. Um, there is a quote in here that kind of describes. Um, his feelings on this um oh yes uh so it says that um he kind of kept no record of his postcards um and he just kind of sent them out to the world to fulfill their destiny and so that's kind of what the book um said that you know he didn't really care what happened to them just as long as they fulfilled their destiny which is you know the whole thing with conceptualism um, so in the book, they kind of give, like, these 17 facts. Um, they don't really explain kind of what they were, but kind of what I got from it was they were 17 different ways Kawara can explain the consciousness 
of the world. Um, and so these are found on pages five, uh, 56 through 58 in the book. Um, and just a couple of them that kind of stood out to me was like the first one um, when he chooses to use codes in his art. They are not the rules, but the mystery before they are broken. Um, and so he kind of honed in on that in a lot of his art pieces. Um, this one, for example, The One Million Years is another piece of art that he also does as well. Um, and you can see the explanation on that on the YouTube channel. Um, if I go back to it, um, these guys do a great job in explaining this museum right here. I'm not going to even start to um, pronounce that one, but this museum, they're are they really like do a bunch of series on on Kawara and like explain a lot of his processes in the different um series that he does and so you can find that one million years within their YouTube channel um but the other thing that also in the 17 facts um he understood the different religions in the world and um, because his mom was Buddhist and his father was Christian, they offered se separate codes, which is that, you know, word again that he used a lot, but common premises. Um, and then to jump down over to 16, Kawara, Kawara's honeymoon with his wife, Hiroko, um, their honeymoon lasted exactly a year. Um, so it started in April 1st, and then it ended in March 31st. I don't know the year of this. It doesn't explain this in the book. I guess I could have looked it up myself, but I did not. Um, they traveled throughout South America, which is kind of where you probably saw all the postcards and stuff coming from. I want to say it's within that time frame that um, Kawara do did that, um, the self-observation series um and then the last one's number 17 is life is the pursuit of consciousness consciousness and you know that was a lot of um what Carrara you know studied and then um used within his art and he really you know wanted to convey that side of things um just showing like the time, the space, the duration, the activity, um, the society, the travel, the time. And he really wanted to hone in on that and, you know, describe that. And I think he did a great job with that, um, with his concep conceptionalism and then the minimalism as well. And so that is Kawara. Hope you enjoyed.